Today I have the privilege of speaking with Peter Cashin about his breaking news. Peter, Imperial Mining, tell us what's going on. Well, we just put our PEA yesterday, well, the results of the PEA, and the, they were just earth shattering. They, they really were good numbers. Well, you know what? For those of you out there that who may or may not know Peter Cash and I have, he's been a leader in the critical material sector. I've known you for what, 15 years? A long time. Uh, earth shattering is not an adjective he normally uses. So tell us what you mean by earth shattering. Well, yeah, uh, we had the discussion earlier, Tracy. Um, um, the uh, Scandium Mark is very complex. It's a Scandium Rare Earth project. Um, it's, it, it's not the LME traded, it's not transparently traded, it works on off-takes agreements and investors have a hard time tr putting a valuation on who we are as a corporation and the valuation of the asset. This, uh, at least the PEA, the financial model associated with it, has come out and it shows the numbers to be unbelievable. And so regardless of the commodity and the complexity of the, of the commodity, people will look at the financial metrics of this project and they they stand up against any project that's out there currently. And of course, for those of you out there, they're going Scandium what? Show them your briefcase. All right, all right. This is a little prop thing that I've that I developed, Tracy. It's, uh, um, I mean, these are three competing metals for things like armor plate or auto manufacturing or uh, uh, EVs. Of course, this is a piece of uh, heavy iron plate, so it's about three quarter inch, very very heavy. Here. I want to show people the difference in me holding this. And this is a titanium plate, same dimensions. Titanium, same. you'll kind of get an so idea. So about 40% lighter than the steel. And then finally, this is the equivalent size of scandium aluminum. Oh, oil. look, it's floating. <laughs> <laughs> big difference. So there's a big difference. And, and cost-wise, uh, probably this piece is about, a, about $30 worth of material. The steel is maybe two, three bucks. The titanium, though, is about 300 bucks. Titanium, although, and these have all the same mechanical properties. So the, the difference is the cost, because to make titanium requires a lot of energy. So very energy intensive metal to produce. So really, our, our stuff competes against materials that are used in the defense, the aerospace, the automotive industry. It's, it's even used in fuel cells. So let's go back to these numbers. What are we looking at? Uh, internal rate of return uh, uh, after tax is uh, 35%. Uh, NPV at a 10% discount rate um, is uh, $2.75 billion. Uh, my, for all intents and purposes, why, why we say two. Um, uh, it's robust up to uh, about 25%. And uh, the flow sheet nulls out at zero at 25%. So pretty well protected from this high inflationary environment that we currently have. Uh, uh, net revenue, annual revenue is about $608 million a year per, for 25 years. And we've got about uh, 45 years defined right now. Uh, and we have, I would say, uh, three or four deposits that we've yet to drill off uh, on the property. So I think if this thing goes, it will be there for a very long time. So if you're looking out there as the markets are rebalancing themselves, recalibrating, or however you want to describe it, I must remind the Investor Intel audience that even in bear markets, 10% of those stocks continue to move north. So why would, and yesterday, when all the stocks were getting correct, We were the only one on the were, green on the screen. You were the only green on the screen. <laughs> so why would you say for all of you investors out there that looking at a Scandium company such as Imperial Mining would be a good calculated risk? That's because if you think the, the companies that were affected, the LME traded commodities, that's the problem. They're, they're, they're transparently traded and in a bad financial market like we're experiencing right now, they're the ones that are being impacted the most and therefore the companies that have those resources in their portfolio are impacted as well. Scandium, although it's opaque, it's, it's, its price point has been fairly steady over time. And really it has an industrial uh, alloy application. That's what it's for. It's in small quantities to aluminum alloy, you significantly strengthen the alloy and it renders the alloy uh, heat resistant, uh, corrosion resistant, so it has application for EVs, for the what they call a skateboard, which is the platform, that, uh, the battery box for, for EVs. Um, it's they, it can be used as weld material to replace the rivets to assemble a plane. 
and that has the effect of lightening up the plane by about 20%. So again, you see that the fuel savings, uh, less emissions, uh, greener, greener application. So it really is starting to show that it has a green moniker, green application. So Peter, again, congratulations on your news, but I gotta ask you, right now, what's making things even more complicated out there is, you know, the Ontario government, for instance, decides to invest, what is it, 4.98 billion into rare earth supply chain. So in Quebec, for instance, what kind of support do you have from the Quebec government? We're, well, they're actually, the Quebec government is moving further upstream. They're actually giving direct support to exploration companies to develop their assets and bring them along. Because that's, the, that's, been, that's been the problem. There's been a gap between the upstream, which is us as a mineral development company, and the applications and the consumers of that material. We need support to develop those assets. And if you don't develop the assets, we don't have the product to deliver to the consumers. So that's a completely different reverse. Uh, the Quebec government supporting the development of the assets and improving, you know, improving the, the, the potential of those things be, being commercialized. So in addition to earth shattering numbers, earth shattering, let's just enjoy that because we don't get, to, we don't get to, to market earth shattering every day. What should we, as investors anticipate next? Uh, we're doing a lot of things actually. Uh, this is the first step I think to moving the project down the development cycle. So um, more importantly I think as you, you're well, well aware in the rear space, you need a process flow sheet. You need a process with which to economically recover your metals, your pay metals out of the rock. Rares are infamous for being very difficult. We have that for our project. We've got uh, a patent, a uh, provisional patent on the, the process. So it, we know it works. And right now we're actually uh, working with a laboratory to optimize it. So we're, the idea being is we want to improve the recoveries, we want to lessen the inputs to recover the material, we want to reduce the carbon footprint. So, um, and then of course, it is a, an input into green technologies. Uh, uh, wind turbines, uh, EVs, um, solid oxide fuel cells, uh, a reduction of uh, carbon emissions from even uh, gas-powered uh, vehicles. So I, I think there's a true green moniker from what we're trying to do and what we'll ultimately end up doing is reducing signif significantly reducing the carbon footprint of most manufactured platforms we have right now. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today and for those of you out there who want to learn more about Imperial Minerals, please go to the following website. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Tracy.